Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and in this video I'm going to be telling you all about what we're doing for the upcoming school year. So my oldest child is starting ninth grade this year, so we're into those high school years. And my youngest um, school age child, well that's kind of hard. I have a six year old and then I have a three year old, almost four year old, and I am doing a little bit of one on one time with my young one. Not because I recommend homeschooling a three, almost four year old at all, I typically don't, but just because I've been recognizing that he needs a little bit of focused one-on-one -on -one time with mom and he wants to be like the big kids, so this is just what he needs. So I'm gonna start by explaining what we're doing just overall, what all of the kids are doing, and then I will go into some specifics of what individual kids are doing. Also, I have to tell you that there are two exciting giveaways with this video. One is from The Good and the Beautiful, and one from Teaching Textbooks. And both of those are offering a full curriculum. Um, the Good and the Beautiful is giving away a science curriculum to you, and Teaching Textbooks is giving away one of their math, um, full year of math. So I will explain more about the details of what they're giving away and how to enter at the end of this video, but let me get started. So I have to explain if you're new here that we do a very much a delight directed learning approach at our house. So um, what that means for us is that we have a few subjects that we do daily that are structured and planned out and assigned. And then the rest of the day is spent with open free time for our kids to explore their interests. And this has already produced great fruit. My older two kids are very clear in their direction for their future and their extra time is mostly spent furthering those skills and abilities and interests. I actually, the reason that I do this direct delight directed learning in my house is because of my own experience that I had growing up. I was homeschooled during the high school years and it was very much of an unschooling kind of experience and I have a video that I can share all about that but in the end it resulted in me really loving to learn going on to college and enjoying that graduating from university and having just a really successful um, educational experience so I am now doing this with my own children and I am encouraging other moms as well I have a membership group and I have a website that I will link in the description box if you're interested in joining us you can find all the details there but it is a private membership group that offers encouragement and uh, I pop in with weekly videos we have different challenges that we'll do sometimes to just encourage us with maybe organization or other things um, we have we're getting ready to start a, a book club where we'll meet weekly over zoom to talk about the latest chapter and most of all, it's a community. So it's women who are like-minded coming together to support one another, to encourage one another, asking questions or ideas of things that they might be struggling with or giving ideas of things that work for them, prayer requests. It's just, it is a beautiful community that we would love for you to be a part of. So you can find out more information at the delightfulhomeschool.com. There's a little tab that says mom's group. Okay, now we'll get on to the reason you're here. So, like I mentioned with teaching textbooks, um, that is what all of my children, uh, my oldest five children are doing. Teaching textbooks starts with level three, they call it. Um, the levels do not necessarily correspond with the grade level. You have to know your child and they have placement tests on their website that can kind of help you figure out you know, what, what they need. So my seven-year-old, on up uh, are doing teaching textbooks this year. My oldest is in the algebra. Samuel, um, my seven-year-old, he did it last year. He did level three. He's about to turn eight in September, so he's really close to eight. He did level three last year and he's doing level four this year and then everybody else is somewhere in between. So that's teaching textbooks. Now for my, um, my six-year-old, Jeremiah, he is um, too young to start teaching textbooks, but um, he really enjoys doing school things. And so I'm trying something brand new this year. This is not, um, not something that I've ever tried before. For Mostly for my kids who want to start some math but are not quite ready for teaching textbooks, I'll have them do part of like 
a, some type of math book. I had the Matthew C. Alpha book that I would use some pages out of or something like that. Um, but for Jeremiah, I'm doing something different. So I'll be excited to update you as the year goes by to see how we like it. We are going to be using this Math K book from The Good and the Beautiful. I guess um, I wasn't, I, I didn't check out their math curriculum at all last year, but what I've heard through the grapevine is that they've changed it this year to simplify things. So that's what we are trying this year. So it comes with a book like this that we sit and we do together. So this is kind of the beginning of the book, is this level. And then when you get to the end of the book, you're on things like learning money. Um, what else do we have here? graphing. So there's a lot of variety and it's very pretty. Um, Jeremiah is a very artistic kid so I know he's going to appreciate this a lot. It comes with a little box of manipulatives like this. So a little bit of hands-on stuff there and I'm really looking forward to spending this time going through this with him. So that is math. Okay on to handwriting. So last year we actually did not do any handwriting at all um, as far as a handwriting book but this year when we were talking about what we wanted to learn for the year several kids had mentioned practicing cursive and so we went ahead and while we were getting that from the good and the beautiful we also got their cursive books. So um, I, I've never done this before also and so I didn't know what levels to pick but I went ahead and I got level six for my oldest. It's this type of. Okay, so it starts out, if you're curious, it starts out with um, the, kind of this level. So this is for a child who's already done some cursive. If they haven't already done cursive, even if they're older, don't start with that book. You want to start with one of the middle books. Let me show you. I have a couple kids who are doing level four. And level four, this is actually the thing that sold me on wanting to try this. My friend Heather, I was at her house one day and she said, my son is enjoying cursive so much. We've never learned cursive before, but she said we got this book and it uses colors to show you how to do the letters. And she showed me what she meant. I thought it was so cool. So um, you can see it, it, the colors are kind of in the order of the rainbow and so it shows you, you put your pencil on the red and then you go to the orange, then you go to the yellow and it shows you what to do um, if, so that you know the direction that they take. Isn't that neat? So um, once you told me about it I thought okay I want to give it a try. Now the cursive portion, so this is what I have for Jeremiah, my six-year-old. He's in level one which looks like this um, and this is no cursive at all in level one. Um, now level two, let's see here. I have all the levels up to six so I can tell you about it. Level two is also no cursive. Okay, so I think it is, yeah. I put Samuel in level three because he's one that wanted to learn cursive. So level three starts cursive pretty much right away. They start by combining the two. So you can see this is just your regular print and then they're also doing a few cursive letters and they combine the two with that color dot method that I told you about. So this would be the, the level if you're wanting to start a kid who's brand new to cursive, um, this, this would be the one to start with, level three. I also went ahead and got this for James. Now like I said, I don't typically do anything structured at all for a child as young as him unless they show interest and for him he wants to sit down he actually already started when I was working with somebody else this morning he sat down and started tracing the lines which is how they start and he was so proud and excited to do this so he just wants a little bit of something of feeling like the older kids now this um, goes all the way to this is the end level it's got, like this kind of complexity so it's just shapes and lines and um, you're not actually doing any letters. It's called the doodles, the pre-writing book. Okay, so I've got eight kids, no, seven kids doing that. That's math, that's cursive. Okay, then the other thing that we do for English is copy work. And I have a full video about, you know, language arts and copy work and why we chose to do copy work and the benefits of it. So I won't go into that in detail here. I'll just go ahead and link that video for you. You can watch it there, but all my kids 
do continue to do copy work. It teaches so many things in a very painless way for your child. So it teaches, you know, spelling without them realizing it and grammar and, you know, sentence structure, punctuation, you know, good um, quality writing, just how words are put together. So it's got a lot of benefits and that's something that I have all my kids do. And then we do literature together. For literature, um, we actually keep it very painless. We just, um, I choose high quality books that I read a lot of the family and we talk about them. So there are two subjects that we're going to do as a group. It's history and science and all of us will be doing those except my son, Leo, who's in eighth grade. He's doing something different, which I'll explain to you in a moment. Um, for everybody else, we are continuing the history that we've been doing for years. So that's Story of the World. We are in level three, and we actually took a break from this last year. Um, I, don't, I don't even remember. I'd have to look back at a video. September, October, maybe. And we did, um, for a while, we just did some Pioneer Days things. Um, I, I just needed that for myself. I just needed a little break. But we're getting back into it. We're on. We're halfway through level three, so we'll just continue this and then move on to level four. And when we're done, we'll go back to level one again. So we just, or I shouldn't call it level, volume. It's not necessarily a level. It's just, you know, chronological, historical um, order. So what this has in it um, is this is the book. And again, I have a video that I can link on all of this stuff. I have a whole playlist on how we homeschool. It's from a year ago, but you can, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. So we'll read, we read um, one of the chapters here. And then I really like the activity book. It's full of activities, way more than I ever use. But I pick things out of it, what, just whatever applies to us. Sometimes we do the craft or activity. Sometimes we don't. But we always do the map. So... In your activity book, you have a map for every chapter, and so you're getting in some geography, and, and it's really fun. And there's also a coloring page for every chapter. So this is just an example of somebody's from um, last year that we already did. So, well, here's a blank map. This is one that's not been done yet. But the maps are full page, but on my printer, I shrink everything down. And I do this because after we do a map, the map work, and we color the coloring page, we cut it out, and we make a notebooking page from it. And that is how, let's see if I can find an example of that to show you. That is how um, we kind of document what we've done in our history. And so when I shrink it down, I can fit everything on a page better. So this kind of shows you an example of that. Let's see if I can find one with the map. Well, she has hers front and back. Here, I'll open this up. And then we slide them into these page protectors so that we have a whole binder full of what we've learned. So you can see this is the picture, and she decided to cut hers all the way out. Most kids don't do that. She's just a little more detailed. And then she wrote something that she learned about that. And then on the back is the map work, which she decided to do her map full color. But they'll, they give all the directions for the map that day in the activity book. So they'll say, you know, the, after you read the story, they'll say, you know, like, you know, Prince Frederick was from England, color England red or whatever, and they'll take you all the way through and give you um, all the directions for that. Okay, so that's what we're doing for history. Now for science this year, we are doing this geology. Sorry, I already put it in here, so it's hard to see. This is the geology curriculum from the good and the beautiful. Um, this actually has, it, it is a family curriculum. So we're going to be doing this for all of my kids again except for my son who's doing something different. And it actually has in it um, different pages for different levels. So for example I, I photocopied the very first um, paper that my kids get to fill out and there's one for grades K through 3, there's one for grades 4 through 6, and then they have an extension page at the end of the lesson which looks like this. And that would be for seven and eight, grade seven and eight ish. I'll use this for my ninth grader as well. And so that goes into greater detail in what you just talked about as a family. So I have not done this before. Um, I will be updating you as the year goes by to see how we like it. But the reason that I really wanted to do this is because I have several kids who have been very interested in rocks. And this is something that we just don't know much about. I don't know about rocks. 
they haven't learned much about rocks and so we just wanted to dive in. We have the rocks and minerals kit that um, comes with the, all of these are different options that you can get for the curriculum. So this is really fun. It's a little box that has, these are your tools and then you have this inside, different types of rocks. And we also have, let's see what else we have with this. We have these books. This is the Rocks and Minerals Study Book, and all of it is beautifully photographed, which makes it so much fun. This is The World Beneath My Feet, and we have Caves, the Underground Wilderness. So we have all of this to explore this year. Um, yeah, I'm excited about it. So my eighth grader, Leo, is not doing those um, curriculums with us because he is completely doing his education on his own this year. We did it partially that way last year and um, yeah, it went great. We're just gonna fully have him work on his own. So he, my husband works from home and he typically works down in a little cabin that we have in the woods and Leo likes to work down there with him or go to his office or whatever. And so I made his, um, he has all of his things that he can take with him and do by himself and not have to wait on us. I also made him a lesson plan. So I have one of these that we'll print out for each week. We only do it four days a week. And I can write on here what he needs to do and then he can just check it off when he's done. So that will make it really easy for him. So he's doing um, reading the Bible, doing a page in that cursive book that I showed you. Um, copy work less than a math a day and then these two just like for us he will do these every other day so he won't be doing them both of them every day and literature since he's not going to be here typically for our read alouds I have books that I'm assigning to him and I'm really kind of pushing him this year to do some different things because I know for his particular interests um, he wants to go into something with computers he's interested in attending college and so I'm doing things a little bit differently for him than I am for my oldest daughter that's the beauty of homeschooling right we don't have to do a one-size-fits-all we can individualize their education so for literature I'm having him I'm, I'm having assigned books for him and then at the end of each chapter in a notebook he's just gonna write a brief summary of that chapter so that'll kind of give me some feedback on what he's reading and understanding. And then he does this on his own. He um, not only finds and learns programs and computer coding, but he's in an apprenticeship with the firm that Jason works for that he does some video work for them. So all of that will go under that. And then he's always been interested in learning Latin and so he'll continue his Latin. He's just been doing Duolingo, which is offered for free online, and I know it's not perfect. I've heard some conflicting things about it, but it's been a good foundational start for him that he'll do for a while. And then we were just talking this morning about switching him to something else that's more in-depth because he's interested in that. He seems to really enjoy it. So for his science and history, he is going to be doing free curriculums from All-in-One Homeschool. He started this last year with their physics and chemistry and really enjoyed it and so he's going to continue that if you go to allinonehomeschool.com maybe I'll find that link and put it in the description box they have different um, just curriculums offered for free and even with the a printout so he got this whole printout and this is what he started on last year that he's finishing up he's doing the different worksheets and I I mean he does this all on his own they have links to different videos to watch and then um, occasionally you fill out a worksheet to go with it and so since that went so well he's also decided to do them for history this year so he's going to be doing their modern history and I guess it's the same kind of idea we'll see how he likes it when he gets going he hasn't started that yet so I printed off all of the oh poke myself in the eye printed off all the pages for their modern history course as well. So he will do those independently. Um, while we're talking literature, um, The Good and the Beautiful sent me some books. I was excited about them. These are the level 8 and 9 books. I was saying that I, I don't have a lot of books for the older levels because of course you know my kids are just now getting to them. So I have lots of books for those middle grades but I'm wanting to start getting some quality books for the older grades too. So 
when the dikes broke, I actually am reading this to the whole family, so we just started that one. And Just David. This is the story of um, Helen Keller, but also the story of her teacher's life, which I've never learned about the, the teacher's experience, so I'm really excited to read that one. This one is a treasure, treasure for Debbie. And then they sent me one more. Leo, you took that other one. Do you remember the name of it? Mm, fox something. Like wild, like fo wild, wild foxes or something. Wild, wild fox. Yeah, Leo already took one of them that he's started reading. So looking forward to getting into those. And then the other book that I am reading aloud a little at a time. I, I got this with my older kids in mind, but the younger ones have enjoyed it too. It's just definitely at a higher reading level. This is written for adults. It's the lost art of reading nature's signs, and it's really pretty fascinating. This man who wrote it is um, the only living person to have both flown and sailed solo across the Atlantic, and he spent a few decades working with tribal people across the globe, learning all of the ways that they read nature's signs. So, very cool book. Um, it's a lot. So if you're thinking about getting this book, just know that your kid needs to either be advanced or you need to read through it and talk about it as a family because it's not written for kids. It's, a, it's at an adult reading level. But we've been enjoying it. Okay, what's next? That's Leo. Alright, so Isabella. Isabella is my ninth grader and so she will be doing the things that I've mentioned already. Copy work, the geology, um, in addition for her science, um, she, Isabella, if you're new to our channel, she is very passionate about animal husbandry. So all of the things involved with homesteading. And that is the, her planned future. She is not interested in attending college and she's just really invested in moving on and having her own farm. And this has been a passion for years. And so I have really tried to just customize her education to follow that dream that she has. So, she, um, in addition to doing that geology with us, she will do all the things pertaining to animal husbandry. So she has a book that she's been going through. Um, it's the Julia Rothman Farm Anatomy book. And there's actually, I bought this, um, last year I bought this farm notebook that goes along with it so that she can um, draw and write the things that she learns from that book. She also um, is a big researcher on her own and she watches homesteading channels on YouTube and has many many books. Books like this. Oops, one that I just happen to have here. And books about chickens and you know all aspects of the animal world when it comes to farms and she will just read these on her own. I don't have to give her any direction with those. And she has notebooks that she will copy down things that she's learned from them. And this is the beauty of Delight Directed Learning. Like I don't have to assign any of this to her ever. In fact, I didn't even realize, you know, a couple years ago I discovered that she was keeping these notebooks full of information that she's learned from all of her books. I had no idea. She's just doing it on her own. And it's the same with Leo and his passion and his learning, which is how he got into doing this apprenticeship. It's just his own um, desire to learn has brought him this knowledge. So there comes a certain point where you have given your children the basics that they need to know and then you kind of can let them loose and they're going to learn it. So um, the last thing that she'll be doing for science aside from that is um, I'm going to be having her record weekly videos where she's sharing knowledge on one of the topics that she's learned about. I don't know if she'll want to share them with the world. We've talked about a YouTube channel for her, but right now I'm just going to have her record them on different topics as a documentation for herself on the things that she knows because she knows a lot. So she'll be doing that as well. And then um, I've talked about this with my mom's membership group in detail about how we plan to document the high school years. Um, just very briefly, um, I'm going to set up a website for each of the kids where they can, um, like the things that she writes about her animals or the videos she records, they can all be put there so that she'll have a digital portfolio of these high school years and what she's learned. Um, 
she also has a business selling rabbits and so she has learned a lot through all of that and keeping track of her expenses and her income and all of the details of that so um, that's part of her education as well let's see what else the rest she does with us oh last thing with her is that she's going to be um, studying driver's ed to take uh, the test to get her permit because she turns 15 in the fall in October so we'll be working we'll be working on that also with her so the other person that I have kind of a little bit of unique um, choices for is um, my how old is she is she fifth grade it's so hard to keep track of grades when you homeschool Elsie she's about to turn 10 I think she's fifth grade fifth grade okay she is very um, passionate about reading and writing and so I got a couple of extra things for her um, this these are both from the good and the beautiful we've have quite a few things from them this year now that I'm sitting down looking at this this is their creative writing notebook for her to go through and um, she's doing these at her own um, choice so some days she's doing copy work some days she's work will be working in these other things and I also have their language arts I had gotten this last year and we're going to work some more in it so we we do this here and there we don't do a full lesson at a time it's a lot of information um, but we'll do like a page or so together so that's just kind of a special thing that we do together a little at a time and then um, other things that my kids are doing is um, anybody who's interested I have more than just Leo who's interested in in practicing Latin that will also be doing that um, also they are using still on and off over the years we've talked about dance mat typing it's a free typing website that's offered by the BBC I think and um, it just offers basic typing practice but in a fun way so kids are free to do that um, I also allow them just to get on the computer on like Microsoft Word and type their own stories so that's something else that they can do I don't do a lot of computer free computer um, time during the day because you know that can just like distract you from doing other things and really suck your time quickly so we try to limit that um, and then as far as the rest as far as arts and all of those other extracurriculars um, my kids just they will go through phases where they will really get into something like for a while they were doing art constantly and then they'll be you know outside exploring it will just be different seasons that they move through and so that is all things that I'm not going to talk about in this video but if you want to hear about other extracurriculars that we do I do have a video that I've already done about that just all different kinds of ideas and resources and so I will link that for you as well okay now on to the giveaways I have two giveaways for you and I will put the links to enter these giveaways in my description box it's just a raffle copter entry one is from the good and the beautiful they are offering where did I set it oh over here they are offering one of the curriculums of the geology that we're using so you will get to do it along with us so that's this ge geology study and I never went through and told you uh, what it covers so it talks about things like plate tectonics and volcanoes and earthquakes and then it goes into minerals and crystals and gems and geodes and rocks and ends up with the earth processes soil and mountains and other landforms we actually have a gigantic geode like this that that uh, Uncle Al gave us and we haven't cracked into it yet we are waiting till we get to the geode section pretty exciting okay so to enter this because I know you would want to um, win this here's the other things that come with it just go ahead down to the description box and you will find one uh, raffle copter link that's specifically for this geology giveaway and the second giveaway is from teaching textbooks and they are going to give away for one of you an enrollment to one level of teaching textbooks for the year and so it's the same thing go down to that description box and find the raffle copter link that will take you there and one of you will get to win that so thank you to both of those companies for 
um, providing those giveaways for you. And if you have any other questions for me, go ahead and leave them in the comments and we can chat down there. If you're interested in my mom's group, go to thedelightfulhomeschool.com and click on the mom's group tab. Hope you guys have a great day.